So this is the 2020 BMW Z4 S-Drive 20i. And I have to say, it's an absolutely stunning thing to look at. I mean, just the way it's styled is just fantastic to me. And I think BMW have really reinvented the Z4 very, very well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a quick walk around now and just have a look at some of these styling cues. Now you can see on the front, we've obviously got the larger than normal new style BMW kidney grills. And uh, I don't think they look too bad actually. It kind of fits this car, which has quite a wide road presence actually. And I think it actually works pretty well. We have, of course, got a couple of fake vents on this 20i model. I'm not 100% sure if these are actually open on some of the higher end models like the 40i, but it's interesting. I mean, I'm not a massive fan of the closed vents, but you know what? It adds to the style a little bit. And it does look pretty good. You can also see we've got this really nice crease line that runs right from the front wheel arch all the way to the back tail lights. It just looks really good. Really gives it a nice, aggressive road presence. Now moving around to the rear of the car, you can see we've got this very nice lip spoiler as well that sits on the rear deck lid. And actually from a side profile, this car just looks absolutely fantastic. The way that line comes down the side and almost blends into this lip spoiler. It just looks absolutely brilliant. We've also got the two uh, twin tailpipes on either side. Again, they create a really nice sound as well, which we'll show you out on the road. But yeah, overall, I think it just looks fantastic. My favorite angle has to be that side profile. It just looks really good from there. Now you can see on this, we've got the 19 inch alloys paired with those M Sport brake calipers. I'm a big fan of good looking brake calipers and these ones look fantastic, both front and rear. These are paired with the Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. We've got a 255 section on the front and a 275 section on the rear. Just, just so much mechanical grip with this. Um, it's, these are quite wide tires as well for such a small and light car. So yeah, that works really, really well. And again, it just looks brilliant. So the interior of the Z4 is actually a very familiar place. We've got BMW's latest iDrive system, and we've got much of this interior which is shared with other BMW models as well. But that's really not a bad thing. It's very, very nicely done. Nice used materials, as I say. Very nice buttons as well. It's very tactile. We've got all these nice little metal buttons and just everything feels nice to the touch, which is important with the price of this car, which is in excess of 40,000 pounds. There's also actually a surprising amount of space in here. A lot of people would probably see this and think, oh, it's quite small, it's not very practical, but there's a lot of storage space. We've got two cup holders back there for little bits and pieces. There's also loads and loads of foot space and a big glove box as well. So obviously the Z4 is convertible and you might think, yeah, you get a lot of wind noise and things, but honestly you don't. Even with the roof down, it's really not too bad if you've got these windows up. There's a wind deflector on the rear as well, which helps to reduce that noise. And if you've got the roof up, I can honestly tell you it's like being in a coupe. It's so quiet on the road, very, very little wind noise. So BMW has done a fantastic job there. And also that top comes up and down in a very short period of time. It just, just takes no time at all, very easy to do. And obviously you can, you can do it on the move as well up to a certain speed, so that's great. One of my favorite bits about this interior has to be those seats. I think, think it's a perfect balance between kind of a level of aggression and uh, making them comfortable as well. They also look really nice to touch with a sort of almost like diamond quilt effect on the on the upper upper section of those. And again, it just makes you makes you realize that what you're paying for here is a very high quality product. One of the most surprising features for me of the BMW Z4 was just how much boot space there is. I mean, if you just take a look in there, it's really quite incredible. It's not all that high, obviously, because the roof needs to fold down into this upper section here, but it goes a really long way back. And there's even a little hatch, I guess, for skis if you wanted to put those through. But honestly, we've had no issues with sticking all the camera equipment here as usual. Um, so yeah, it's surprisingly practical, this thing. It's one thing I can definitely tell you.
The sports car section of the current car market is a very interesting one for me, as it's one that's kind of become more and more relevant actually as time has gone on. It seems like these days people demand more and more from their cars, especially when it comes to being an all-rounder and something that can kind of do a little bit of everything. For example, we're seeing these high-performance SUVs, high-performance variants of uh, estate cars and saloon cars, so there's just less and less of these types of cars. But that, does that actually mean they are irrelevant? Well, I don't think it does. I've been massively impressed by this BMW Z420i, which of course has that two litre four cylinder single turbo that's twin scroll. It's a very familiar engine actually at this point, and uh, as I've said before in other videos, it's used massively across the BMW and Mini range. In this state of tune, it offers 197 horsepower and 236 foot pounds of torque, which I suppose is probably enough for most people. This being more of a driver's car, I suppose it's kind of set up in a way to handle better and not necessarily be fast point to point or zero to 60 in top speed. And from the moment you get into this thing, it just screams driver's car. I mean, this seat is really nice and low. We've got this amazing uh, view out over the top and just everything just feels nicely set up. It just really sort of instills confidence in the driver. And of course, with that roof down, we've got some really nice exhaust noise as well, which is quite impressive in this thing. The 197 horsepower probably doesn't sound like all that much. This car weighs about 1,430 kilos. It's not the lightest thing out there. And it doesn't feel like the quickest car in the world, if I'm totally honest. But it feels quick enough. I think in this day and age, it's almost like people have become a little bit greedy for power. And it's only when you get in something that has slightly less power like this that you realise maybe you don't need all that much power. Some nice turbo noise there. And power builds right up. Because this engine is kind of quite held back in its tune, power actually builds really nicely, almost quite linear, right up to the red line. Peak torque comes in from around 1500 RPM and stays on to about 4500. So that just gives you an idea of how much torque there is to use. And ultimately, that's what you feel and need when you're driving. The suspension, of course, in a car like this is quite firm, and especially on the damping, it, it does feel quite firm on some of these British B-roads. But, I mean, I'd probably be complaining if it wasn't firm and this thing was wallowing all over the place. So, I think it works absolutely fine, and it's, it, it is relatively comfortable, to be honest. The brakes just feel fantastic in this. Uh, the brakes that BMWs are using right, on their everyday road cars, i.e. not the M cars, are just fantastic. They've got such a good positive bite. They seem to just never fade, unless obviously maybe using it on track, but for public road use, yeah, these are just so well set up. Very powerful, especially for a car that doesn't weigh all that much and isn't all that fast. The steering as well is really nice and precise. It's a quite a fast rack. And even the steering wheel doesn't feel too fat. There was a period where on BMWs the steering wheels were just stupidly fat. And actually this one feels pretty nice. We've got the really nice paddles as well that are right, right behind the wheel there and easy to access. And on that point, of course, we've got the ZF8 speed transmission, which is as good as ever. Nice quick shifts. And in fact, once you've got it in sport mode, the shifts are even quicker and it really does sort out those rev matches nicely. I suppose you could ask the question of, does it feel like it's lacking driver involvement by not having a manual box? Yes, I think it does to an extent. It would add another element of driver experience if you could have a manual box in this thing. But we're just at the point now where there's just less and less manual boxes around. I mean, it's really not surprising that there isn't one on this Z4. But I think it works. You stick this thing into manual mode and it does work really well. You can still have quite a bit of fun in it and obviously control those shifts quite nicely yourself. Of course, these days we've got endless amount of filters and exhaust systems just to try and help to reduce emissions, but it's really actually quite impressive how much noise comes from that thing. We've even got some nice pops and uh, little crackles as well. Mm -hmm. 
So the Z4 in the UK starts from just under £40,000, and the 20i model like this, uh, as spec'd, is around about 42000 when new. So, I mean, at that price point, it's, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because arguably you could get yourself into a slightly older, kind of like first generation M2, and maybe that would be a much better driver's car, but I think, honestly, the people that are buying these things aren't buying it for those reasons. The people that buy this thing probably want to use it as more of a car they can enjoy a little bit and have a little bit of fun in sometimes. Arguably as well, people that especially who are buying the 20i model may not be as bothered about out and out speed and performance, but more just kind of won over by the looks of the thing and there's no denying this thing just looks absolutely stunning. Being a convertible, you might be put off by the fact that in places like the UK, you can just never have the roof down. Currently, it's five and a half degrees and raining, and I have the roof down, and I'm perfectly warm. We've got a steering wheel heater, heated seats, I've got the nice warm air blowing through. Honestly, it's really not too bad. And I must say, with that roof down, that exhaust just sounds absolutely fantastic. I suppose then, to conclude, is this section of the market, and the BMW Z4 for that matter, actually still relevant? Yes, it definitely is. I think it's a, almost a shame that we're seeing less of these cars these days, and you can only hope that maybe going forward we will start to see more of these sports cars, but currently consumer demand just really isn't at the same levels as it once was. As I mentioned earlier, people are just looking for different things in their cars these days, and as car prices creep up a bit, as people are financing more, I just think people demand more and more from their cars and they don't want something that they can only use on a weekend or on certain days of the week and it's a shame because you can really go out and have a lot of fun in cars like this. And I think that the way BMW have revived the Z4 really does do it justice and uh, it, it's just overall a fantastic car, I would highly recommend one if you're kind of in the market for something like that. Now I'd like to say a massive thanks to uh, Cooper Side BMW for making this review possible. I'd be very appreciative if you could check out all their links in the description below, and if you're in the market for a new BMW, you should definitely go and check them out.